Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Clueless Day Trading Frank. It's approximately 8.43 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on a beautiful uh, evening here on the New Jersey, New York waterfront. It is April 24, 2018. This is a very critical, in my opinion, um, strategic uh, market update to benefit all members and traders at Clueless Day Trading. Session will be recorded, uploaded to the Clueless A Trading YouTube channel. The quick marketing plug, the YouTube Clueless A Trading channel is open for anyone to view, learn the real facts about the market, not the fake stuff that you hear from the financial media. Um, and I hope that everyone goes out there and spreads the word. This full disclosure, this is purely for financial education, not for any solicitation or advice. The ultimate decision always lies with you on what you'd like to do. I am simply uh, a use Clueless A Trading simply as in a very precise, effective tool on navigating the markets, perf uh, doing your trades, and hopefully profiting from it. And that's the name of the game. We're all in this boat together, and the difficulties that we all in encounter every single day in the markets is not something that is. Uh, uh, that I don't feel. I feel it every single part on my bone, uh, and I try really hard, very hard, like I said uh, on one of the real-time Twitter feed posts today, that I work like a dog, so you guys should work like a mule or a donkey, whatever, or a dog. If you love dogs, we love animals. We have a whole bunch of them in the house um, to take advantage of what I am delivering and acting on it and uh, hopefully profiting from it. So that's it. All right, let's start the session and we'll try to keep it short and straight to the point. So first of all, what you're looking at behind you is the actual S&P 500, not the E-minis or the live trading charts, which we're gonna look into in a few minutes. Couple of important things here that I'd like to mention. First of all is the behavioral aspect of it, which I really, really practice, and I believe that everyone should in any profession that they're in. Doesn't matter what they're in, whether it's trading, whether it's um, your marital life, uh, whether it's your business, or whatever that you do, okay? The key word is you have to be in the zone. You have to be in the zone. I repeat again, you have to be in the zone. It's called immersion. One of the best videos that I said traders should listen to, and I hope many of you did, and you have to listen to it over and over again at your own time, is Dr. Steenbarger's video on what makes a successful trader. I'm not, a, I'm not even close to my potential. I'm not. Okay, I'm the first one to admit it. I'm the first one to admit my deficiencies, and I'm not just saying this lightly, okay? And I know exactly where my faults lie. The type of content that I deliver, I should be making a heck of a lot more than what I'm doing right now. So the, the thing in life is that you have to accept your faults, your deficiencies, slap yourself a couple of times, and wake up. And if you do that enough times and you, and, and you stick to the, uh, uh, the learning part of it, there is no doubt in my mind that you are going to make money. I keep on telling myself that. Every time that you're not making money is every time that you're losing money. And that's a fact. Okay? There are every single day, good, bad, or ugly markets, there are opportunities to make money. Today was a, today among many days, was one of those days where tactical trading, not emotional trading, delivered some substantial profits on the short side as well as the long side on the early part of the day. So if anybody's coming out with a bag full of excuses that they can't do this because they have a full-time job, they can't look at the markets, blah, 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 I beg to differ. I obviously have an advantage, and so do people who have ample time on their hand during the day to tra who tra trade the markets and looking at screens all day long or, or, or following the markets 
of course, they're at an advantage because they can understand all the nuances of what's going on between every single hour, during every single hour of what's happening in the market. But swing traders who do not have the luxury of that time don't have an excuse either. The reason being that they're being fully alerted on a real-time basis and with the technology that we now have in our hand, whether it be a PC, whether it be an iPad, whether it be an iPhone or an Android or a Samsung, actually, just, you know what I'm going to say, destroy that Sam Dung phone that you have and buy an iPhone. Okay? Stay American. So bottom line is you are being alerted. So even if you do not care to trade on a 15-minute, one-hour basis, you can still do the swing trades. You do not need to look at the screen every one hour, every 15 minutes. I have, am, I have a good number of traders who have highly professional jobs, making a lot of money in their regular income, who are making money off clueless aid trading. Whether it be swing trades like Ulta, Beauty, whether it be Chipotle, whether it be Win. Okay, just to give you some small examples of a couple of massive swing trades from weeks ago, from a few months ago, they are making money. People who trade the market on a systematic basis, such as the S&P 500, displayed here through the S&P 500 futures, of course have to watch the markets. But even then, when, I, when they are seeing multiple real-time publication of charts that are showing breakdowns, and I'm saying go out there by the 2660 puts, by the, by the uh, 266 puts on the spies, after selling the overnight highs and the opening highs on the market. They can always put out a trade out there. It's not about the content that I deliver, which is extremely specific. And I'm not some guy who's going to sit here and brag about my intellect and my genius. I am not. I'm far from it. And good friends of mine who are here today know very well. This is not one of those crappy trading services that tells you that you that I'm going to guarantee you that you take 10,000 bucks and make yourself into a millionaire. No, it doesn't work like that. But boy, can you get 100, 200, 300% on an intraday basis and similar percentages on a swing basis? Yes, you can. Because all that is displayed in clear format on my real-time Twitter feed, Clueless 8 RT. So, excuses are dime a dozen. Every time, you know, in the old days, I used to walk over to my wife and say, oh, I had a hard day. This was really tough. God, you know. She just looked at me and said, you chose this profession. You wanted to be a trader. You were on Wall Street. You were on the analytical side. You were on the sales side. Yes, there was extreme pressure. Nothing like a trader. A trader is cut from a different cloth. So she said, you wanted to become a trader. You have it. So just go do it. And I said, thanks, hon. That's exactly the way it is, guys. All right? You want to make money off your passive income this is the money that part of the money that you earn from your regular jobs most of you do unless you have a trust you're a trust fund baby and you have a couple of million bucks you know just lying there fine in that case trade big you make a lot of money off my service but the point is that yet let that passive income grow these are extremely volatile markets I am not making any qualms about the fact that these are difficult markets, extremely. But therein lies the huge opportunity to make triple-digit percentage ROI returns within a single span of 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time till 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's no other business in the world that can allow you to do that. I'm not a gambler. I never sit at tables in casinos. The last I remember, I spent 20 bucks on a slot machine. Even when I was in Vegas, 
my gamble is called the quantitative tactical gamble on these multiple screens that I look at. So if you think this is a gamble and this is a gambling casino, like a lot of people say, you know, you know, I met somebody at a car show over the weekend. They said, yeah, stock market, it's a gambling casino. I like playing the real estate market. I said, great. So you flip houses and when things go wrong, you still make money. He goes, yeah, I do. I said, great. Nice talking to you. Okay. Everyone each to its own. The beauty about the stock market is, and guys, never forget that, is that you can get out of a position with a six, seven dollar ticket charge within a split second, within split seconds, three seconds, your trade is out. Try doing that when flipping houses. All right. So I'm a big believer of financial markets. I'm a big believer of the U.S. financial markets, which are the most transparent. And despite all his faults and all the machinations of um, algorithmic high frequency trading, the fact remains that this is a business where you can get in and out of positions, make a very decent sum of money or even a little money. Doesn't have to be every day, but every week, every month. As long as you understand what is going on. Therein lies the power of clueless aid trading. We like to empower people, not just by trade alerts and tactical charts, by giving them a rounded view of what is going on. So they understand when they hear the news coming out and the noise breaking every single, uh, every single hour, which is standard procedure, okay, that they know what they need to do. And I make sure that I work very hard all through the trading day, even now, to empower yourself, to help you empower yourselves to do that. To me, knowledge is power. To me, and I might be old fashioned that way, going out there and knowing every stat of every a uh, ball game out there is not making you a single dollar richer. It's a fact. That should be a hobby, not a way of making money. To me, knowing every stat about some singers, you know, where they, what, who they're dating, what they're doing, or whether LeBron is doing this or that, it's all fine and good. They're the one making the multi millions, taking in 30 million a year which you are putting in their pocket. But are they making you any bit richer? Yeah, if you're doing like fantasy game, uh, football and this and that, yeah, maybe that's real gambling. That's fine. But aside from that, they're doing nothing for you. This is the only business trading, which is basically the faster version of investing that you have control over as long as you understand, despite what the market throws at you. Always remember that. So coming back to it, you got to be immersed. You got to be in the zone. You do not need to be living and breathing it like I do because I love it. Because to me, the, so, uh, the, the stock market and trading is like a soap opera that's getting played out. But God help me if somebody comes and tells me that there is any other business out there which is better than what we can do. Now, saying all that, is it easy? Absolutely not. Do I make it easy by helping all of you? Yes, a lot of the times I do because the hard work is coming from me. The toughest job you got to do is to act on it. And that is something that many fail to do. I ain't your daddy or your mommy, okay? So I'm not going to tell you what's good or bad for you. But I'll tell you one thing. When you sit there and you miss trades and you, and you keep on doing that all the time, you're the one who's punishing yourself, not me. So that's it. All right? So on that note, here are the facts of the market. 
the market right now is extremely volatile. If you expect sanity of the, from the markets in the near future, you're not going to get it. I have accepted the fact that this is the new normal. There are multiple factors why this is happening. I have say, uh, mentioned that quite a few times, what those factors are. 10-year government bond deals hitting almost 3%. Big frigging deal. But markets act? Absolutely markets react. I've explained the whole concept of why bond deals, when they rise, bond prices are falling just the way when a stock price falls. You get big institutional margin sellouts. The credit market is very large. That ripple effect falls over, spills over into the stock market. And funds have to, which own both bonds and stocks, have to sell stocks to cover those margin uh, uh, calls. So it has a negative effect. Then you get all these different downgrades and this and that on huge big name stocks like Apple. I can give you a very bullish case on Apple. I can give you a bearish case on Apple. All I know is one thing. Value fund managers who like Apple for the 6% dividend, knowing very well they're going to raise their dividend, knowing very well they have more cash to buy up a couple of different nations in the world in one fell soup. They probably have more cash than our Federal Reserve does. Okay, or a Treasury Department does at a certain time. But the stock falls. That's normal. There's Apple. Broke some key levels. We're going to talk about this tonight too. I really hope I can keep this within 30 minutes, but I'll try, though. Um, and by the way, people who'd like to really learn all this stuff, you know what I say. Sign up for those advanced coaching sessions, the ones who did before. Resign back because I don't get a single peep out of anybody these days because everybody's so scared. They just don't want to participate, which brings me to my final point on the behavioral part. The less of the participation by retail emotional traders, the better off we are making money long and short. And that is exactly what is going on every single day. Okay? I'm not a kid who was born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Every single dollar was earned through hard work. There is no American dream. You create your own dream. It's not like you wake up in a dream and say, oh, I'm in the U.S., I'm going to be a millionaire. No, it doesn't work like that, okay? The fact is that the amount of despair, the fear levels are so intense that there is not a single peep out of any of the peeps out there. On days where the market sustains a, uh, uh, um, one of these rallies, one of these type of things uh, where there's a sustained move in between like that, right somewhere around here, somewhere around here, you see involvement in the chat room. You see these people coming in, you know, good people. I love everybody. You know, like my good friend Donald likes to say, he loves everybody. Okay. So bottom line is that this is where the retail investor comes in. And you start to see chatter in the chat room. It's a perfect indicator of a short-term market top. The more the silence that you get in a trading chat room, in, in this particular case, the clueless a trading chat room, the better off you are to find opportunities to make some significant money, which we did, which we do almost every 24 to 48 hours. Somebody says the market was down 600 points, ended down 423. How many stocks did I recommend in the last 24 hours that went berserk at the open? Do I need to remind anyone? I don't think I do. And I'm not going to remind anyone because they should have the obligation for their own good. If they are working to not lose money and make money, go through all the winners that we had within the first hour of the half an hour of the market pop where we sold those profits. End of story. So this is where the retail investor all sought to feel good. 
No one is in sight here. No one is going to be in sight here. No one is going to be in sight here. They are not going to be around here. Slowly creeping in, maybe. They're all going to be clustering here, and bang, it hits here. It's going to be another sell off. Welcome to the new normal. It is called tactical domination of by algorithmic high frequency trading programs. And you can make a lot if you simply, I'm not going to say simply follow my charts, but I'm going to say simply monitor, act on it, play with, uh, play with certain monies. And which brings me to my second final point. The lesser money that you put in during these massive moves, the bigger your returns are going to be. Because the more, if you put a substantial money amount of money, when I said short the market at that uh, uh, 26, uh, I, I said short the market at this level, and I said it's going to it's going to go to 2660. That's why I put the 2660 or the 266 puts in play after selling the 267 puts around here, calls around here, spy calls. Let's talk about the spy. But the more money that you put here, you're going to see your money just go berserk higher. So what do you do? You think you're just going to hold it? No, you're going to get out of it and you're going to miss, miss this move. And then the idiots who come in, I hopefully we don't have too many idiots in our group. And short here, where we are basically taking our massive profits from this breakdown, and the SPY and the SPX puts are the ones who are going to be handed big fat negative dollars because the market bounced hard. Do I sound like I'm talking from Mars? No, I'm talking facts. So the bottom line is that the lesser amount of, I, I su highly suggest, this is a suggestion, I'm not your broker, I'm not your financial advisor, you know. I'm not your money manager. I'm just telling you suggestions that you can take advantage of. That even small amounts of money, buying something at four bucks will deliver 10 bucks here. And how many times have I shown that today? So the lesser amounts of money that you put in, the better are you going to do. You're going to put in big money, that's your prerogative. Do it. But then if the market stopped here on this... Um, massive support level and bounce what would have happened to the big money that you shorted on the alert you would lose it and it's scary happened to me today for example i didn't put in big money i shorted and the minute i shorted there was this uh, 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 blue uh, uh, green candle so i'm upside down by about 30 percent within the first um Within the first um, 11.15, yeah, right here. Within the first uh, 15 minutes, okay? I'm looking at this chart. I'm looking at the daily charts, which are telling me that it's that all the crossovers are down, the slow stochastics, everything. And I beg you guys, study my uh, uh, real-time tweet. Everything is laid out. It's the ultimate reconnaissance roadmap to fight the war and win. So I'm not going to go through it all because then it's going to take three hours. Want to learn everything about it? Sign up for the ACS, Advanced Coaching Sessions. So bottom line is, so I'm upside down. So but I'm looking at things here. I'm thinking, oh boy, this is good. You know, this is great. Okay. I'm looking at, I'm holding my nose, then I go and buy a few more puts here. Bang. Right after that, and I'm showing all this. It's not that I'm just doing this for myself and giving you guys the crumbs. Okay. And um, let me expand. So this move alone on the 266 puts, all of a sudden I'm down 30% just on this candle. But I'm looking at stuff on the other side too, which is the slow stochastics, which are still pointing down. The VIX, which is still not bending down, still showing life, which I also posted a couple of times. So I go buy more puts. Those puts went from eight to ten dollars on average. I'm talking about the SPX ones because they were in the money. That's why they were priced here. By the time the market reached here, they were 42. 
Now, when was the last time you bought a stock at eight that went to 42 in four hours? <laughs> when was the last time you did that? When was the last time you went somewhere and said, hey, guy, I'm going to give you eight bucks. Give me, uh, I'll give you 800 bucks. Give me 4,200 bucks back. I do this for you guys almost every, I shouldn't say every other day, but at least a whole bunch of days during every month. And not because I'm a genius, because the volatility allows me to show you guys what you need to do. Now, if you're not doing it, hey, good luck. What can I say? I love you all, but you know, you want to keep on doing stupid things, then do it. Because when you're starting to see that, you don't need to go from 8 to 42. I didn't. I sold all along the way. I wish I put in 8,000 and took out 42,000. I've done that before. Or you put 800 bucks and take 4,800 bucks. So this 8 to 42 means you put $800 and you take out $4,200. So even if you didn't take $4,200, what if you took out $2,000? That's twelve hundred dollars profit, and if so, uh, uh, bigger accounts, you put in eight thousand bucks because things are really looking dicey. Heavy pressure, heavy candle. The candles are telling you there's big selling pressure after the break certain levels. Because as tactical traders, we are looking at levels that are breaking up or down. We're not keeping. We're not like thinking, oh, maybe this is going to happen. Now, is it that easy? Do they go out in a straight line down? Yes, it looks like that at the end of the day. But during the day, while it's going on, it's more like zigzags. I don't need to ask any of you because if any of you are real traders, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So 8,000 bucks is 42 grand. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Would you become from being an emotional retail trader to being a pro trader if you ever made that type of money in one single frigging day? The question is a rhetorical question. No answers need to be given. You'd make yourself 34 grand in one in a span of four to five hours, and trust me, you would buy every single one of my frigging alerts. End of story. Okay? And all this is clearly laid out, the roadmap, on the real-time Twitter feed, blow by blow. So, what's to say? So, this is where we are right now, guys. All right? Let's take a look at this chart is meaningless. Let's take a look at the daily. How much more precise can I get? I ask myself a question. What if I was a total clueless idiot? Which every morning when I wake up, I tell God, you know, God, in your eyes, I am a clueless idiot. I have so much to learn. I have so much to fix. I'm not going to say so many wrongs to fix, but hey, every man is a sinner, right? So we, we need to all fix ourselves. Maybe I'm less of a sinner than most people out there, but hey, the bottom line is this is your daily chart. You see this candle expanding, blood red. That's half a billion bucks or more. Just taking a guesstimation, right? Estimation of the thing. Going out of the market. So even if you don't follow the 15-minute charts or the one-hour charts and those candles, like, you know, slipping and sliding, but then trying to find the support, follow the swing chart. No excuses. Every two hours, look at the charts. And I'm posting this at almost every hour. The S&P 500. And look at the blood red candle. So even if you're up and down a little bit, you stick to that trade to the point where I said it was going to go, which was it was going to fill the lower gap here. And that is exactly what it did. Now, go ahead and tell me because I don't need any kudos. I want to be blessed by God, not by men or women. Okay. Tell me any other trading services that is so precise. 
I think one of my problems is, is that I am so precise with my tactical pre uh, uh, precision uh, alerts and more importantly the charts that they're just too difficult for some people to handle. We had a bunch of cancellations of members this week because they can't handle the volatility. God bless them. Remember, less of the participation by retail individual traders, the better off tactical traders like us and many of you will do. We need minimal participation by emotional traders and you will make the most money because when they all get into the act is when things go wrong, both sides. Okay? We want them out of the act. I hate saying this, but that's a fact. So it gets to the bottom of the gap, and lo and behold, it bounces. And that bounce alone, within the last 30 minutes of trading on the SPX 2645 calls, was, put it down, the SPX. And I wasn't playing with like 20,000 bucks on the trade. I wish I did. I'd have probably made $100,000 today. Okay, seriously. Because if something goes up 400 uh, to 300%, all you need to do is put in 20 grand and you're up to like, you know, up to 80 grand. I mean, there's 60 grand. But I am disciplined, which is kind of stupid sometimes. I should be less disciplined. In the old days, I was less disciplined. I used to put in like money hard and make like ton. But then you lose it like that too. So the SPX 2645 calls that I recommended, these are short-term calls expiring tomorrow. I'm not worried about what's tomorrow. I'm more worried about what's happening today. That's what I'm concerned about. They went from $3.10 to after hours, you could have sold them or even at the close at $6 plus. How do you like that? This little wick here is worth 100% of your capital what's so hard you can buy one call at three bucks and make 300 bucks in 25 minutes come on guys you tell me that if i i'm not in the business of waking up okay maybe joel olstein will he's a great preacher okay but just ask yourself what you guys are doing and i'm sure many of you did very well so i shouldn't be you know ranting about it but this little wick alone this little right there right there is 100 percent because there is no time value left right on those particular calls because they're expiring tomorrow not at the open at the close so you're playing with intrinsic value so every dollar move it is incrementally pushing up the gamma and the delta on those options, and they're moving fast. And why did I pick 2640? Uh, uh, why did I pick um, 2645 as the calls? Because the upper end of this move was around 2637. And I said, you know what? Those were good enough because just in case they went the other way and they fell down, then I wouldn't lose that much. So just to recap, this is where I shorted the market, right? Around these levels. They went from four, uh, uh, they went from, I'm sorry, eight, 10 bucks on average to 40, 42. Along the way, we played as it's moving forward, you're way into money. So you push out the puts. I said 2660, then I said 2640, I believe. It's all there on the Twitter feed. Then I said 2600. And the 2600s also went up by about, I believe, 50%. Then we went long here, and this wick alone in the last half an hour was 100%. This, ladies and gentlemen, was 300%. Ask yourself what you're doing. Don't ask me what I'm doing because I'm doing my job. 
This is big stuff. Volatility, you can make money. So one of the suggestions I can give uh, give all of you is don't bother. Keep most of all your money in cash. Get in every day with a lot in cash and maybe a few things on, on the earning side which deliver big time overall. So buy one call each. What's the big deal? One call of, uh, uh, of uh, EDU that I recommended yesterday went from two to seven. So what if you bought 10 calls? You went from two grand to seven grand just to start the day. Lockheed Martin, way up there before it collapsed. Boeing, way up there. They went from a buck 40 to $2.65. You doubled your money. And there are tons of them. Just uh, go, go through my Twitter feed. See all the uh, real uh, real time alerts I put out there on the earnings. You can buy one call. You can buy half a call or half a put. Maybe someday they're going to come up with that. All right. So let's see what's happening to the broader market. That's your spy. And where is my SPX? Why am I getting a blank, blank screen? Great. They're giving me a blank screen. So um, something is wrong. Everything is very slow right now. Come on, baby. Any questions you guys have, uh, just feel free to ask me in the middle. Um, don't be shy. Way too many charts. Okay, SPX. Oh, there we go. SPX daily. So let's see what's going on there. Oh, we just saw that the SPX daily. It hit. The, oh, this is the actual version of the SPX. I believe we were looking at the spies on this. No, we were looking at the SPX. So same thing. Nothing more to go. So let's take a look at what's going on here. We are. We, the the market is. Right now, not in a good spot. Okay, let's face facts. Now, one of our new free trial members uh, asked me, well, hey, uh, everything looked good yesterday and uh, you were uh, bullish. I said, yes, I was. And I made, took some nice bullish gains right off the top. Am I lying? No, I did. And then I asked him a question. Do I look like I'm Moses or God? Do I know that Caterpillar CEO is going to say this might be the peak of their earnings cycle. And the stock, which was up $7, then crashes down $9.73 at the close. That's a $13 move down. I should have actually shorted it, but I was too busy making money uh, buying the puts on the SPIs and the SPXs. So he goes, I felt very bullish. So I said, are you looking at my charts? He goes, yeah, let me take a look at them. That is the biggest fundamental mistake that a lot of, I, I don't think a lot of members, but a lot of traders do. Take a look at my tweets because things change. Stay flexible. Things change. One thing I've learned about the market in all these years is they will change the whole clock. Just turn it around. Within an hour, and all of a sudden, the whole narrative changes on the market. We're not the ones who control the market. I'm just a very fast messenger of the market. I take, take advantage of it. So if you guys want to stick to a dogmatic thinking of the market, I still believe that we're in a bull market. I do. But we have, we're seeing cracks. And the biggest crack that you see Okay, not the drug, the market. Okay, is the fact that we lost the 150 day moving average right there. And you guys can see all of them. You have platforms you trade on, right? So you can mimic my charts. So this gap was filled. It was filled last Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday. We had a doji of the, of the 150 day moving average. And then we lost it. We lost it, baby, like they say. All right? So if you're losing it, 
what are you going to do? Sit there and say, no, no, for sure we're going to get it back today. No, it doesn't work like that. We are now approaching the 200-day moving average, which is most likely going to get tested. At the open, I don't know, but it will most likely get tested. This is on the daily charts, so it might not be tomorrow. But this level here, 2607, in my opinion, very likely will get tested. Now, it does it have to be that perfect? No, because if everybody thinks we're going to test it to one of the moving average, the machines won't let them do that. That's just the way it works. A watch pot never boils. So, bottom line is, at this point, we have the 150-day moving average to recapture, if it can, that's 26.55 is a possibility that happens. The 50-day moving average now is way up out there, which also means you got to think outside the box. That's why I say use your eyes. God has given us eyes. God has given us brains. It's given us hands and ears and so many other facilities to run our body and our mind. Use them. I don't want to be an evangelist, but I swear to God, I, I every single morning I tell myself, if God has given us so many functions, why the heck are we making excuses in anything that we do? Half the time we're not using our brains, we're not using our eyes because we're not looking at things. It's a sad commentary. So the 50-day moving average right now, any kid can do this, okay? And with my tactical charts, honestly, I wasn't being sarcastic. Even a five-year-old can trade my charts, except a five-year-old has no fear. And a 35-year-old or a 25-year-old or a 55-year-old has way too much fear. This is a market that requires courage. So the 50-day moving average is right now at 26.88. Is there any doubt that we're going to go back and retest, retest it, possibly fail again if the market is truly in a massive downtrend? There is no doubt in my mind it's going to go back and retest 2688. Now, if you ask me, like a juvenile amateur, oh, is it going to happen tomorrow? Well, I can't answer you that question. But I know it's going to happen. So even if it doesn't test the 50-day 50, 50 moving average, it will test the 2678 level, which is a lot. We closed at 2632. I alerted people to buy the SPX calls at around 2616. So let's say hypothetically, and I think President Trump is doing, he's playing word games again with the Iran stuff, because that's serious stuff, okay? The Saudis are all with the Trump team to squeeze the Iranians to make sure that they don't, you know, that they, that they, 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 they renegotiate the nuclear deal. Like, look, I don't fully understand the nuke deal, okay? All I know is that the nuke deal that was negotiated was great for American business. Iran is a troublemaker, not the people, the mullahs. I hate dogmatic fanaticism in every religion. And those guys are dogmatically fanatic. Well, so was, so was Saudi Arabia. It's the most fanatical Muslim country around. But now they have a new leader, young guy. He's modern. He's opening up the country, which is a great thing. Iran in itself, believe it or not, is far more modern than Saudi Arabia. But we have a beef with Iran because Saudi Arabia wants us to pick a fight with Iran, which is fine. Which is not fine because Iran is not a bunch of wuss, wusses. They cause trouble around the Middle East. They are behind Syria's Assad. And many other regional conflicts that's going on out there. Read up. And Russia is in bed with Iran. All right? So you honestly think Iran is just going to basically just mosey away and say, oh, oh we're really scared of Donald. We're going away. No. They're going to stand up and fight, and that's going to be no good if we get into real trouble with them. And you know who's the biggest backer is going to be? Mr. Vladimir Putin. 
because he is the one who builds and supplies the nuclear reactors that Iran is building, which is a serious threat to the Middle East. So wake up and smell the coffee, guys. All right. It's a lot of stuff going on. So the markets don't like it. But it's good for American business because Iran, the people in Iran, and believe me, I know, okay, is they're very U.S. centric. They don't want the mullahs. And there are enough reformist forces within Iran which can hopefully come to power and be very open with the with the U.S. and Europe, which they are right now, by the way. They need our aircraft. They need our technology. They're very smart people, by the way. They're a lot smarter than, by the way, the Saudis. Saudis are the big kahunas. They got the money. So do the Iranians. The Saudis got more money because they got more oil. Where's oil right now? 70? You know how many billions of dollars that they made? Every day? Not every month? You don't want to know. Too much wealth. So, the markets don't like the fact if we start a shooting war with Iran. That was one of the reasons why we fell. Air aircraft companies, they basically supply huge amounts of parts and stuff. They opens up a huge line of business. Lockheed Martin, Boeing. Everyone flies a Boeing, right? Best aircrafts in the world. So, Apple can do business in Iran. Why not? Business. Are they evil people? No, they're not. Just the way we thought every Arab was an evil guy. Saudi Arabia was an evil country, except they were always on the U.S. side. Iran's in the Russian side. So all of a sudden, they're very evil. Okay. We don't want a shooting war with Iran. Trust me. So, saying all that, this is what we are. We lose it to one day moving average. You can close your eyes and short the market all the way down to 2532 because once the 200 day moving average is violated yes there are certain support levels that i'm showing here where the markets bounce from and you guys can see that too but there is a good chance we will test the lows off february 9th so keep an eye on my alerts this was looking like a this was looking like i explained in my last video it's looking like a handle well, guess what, honey? The teacup handle broke. Now, will it get back in the handle? There's a good shot it can. Earnings season is only one third over. Two thirds of earnings are coming. Okay? And if, let's say out of the two thirds, if another one third says good things, great earnings, which are easy to beat right now, but then say, hey, we're really worried about this or that. We don't like the fact that we're getting the trade war with China. NAFTA has not worked out yet. We don't want a shooting war with Iran. Then the market will fall again. So a dogmatic bear will say, hey, I definitely see the 2500 level as a great short. Great. You can do that. But do I think it's going to go there? I have no idea. I will simply follow my charts. So if we get back in this nice cup, zigzag, okay, cup, you can rest assured that the market will have a massive short squeeze rally to the top of this consolidation channel, which is around 2677, and possibly kiss the gap that it went to at 2700. Does that mean we're going to go and blow up all the way up to 2740? I have no idea. All I know is that at this point, internally, there is a crossover down. You guys can see it. You guys are smart. You don't need smartness. A five-year-old can read this chart, for God's sake. We have a crossover down, and that crossover right now is heading down. So the more the higher probability trade is regardless of a bounce the market is going to bounce lower till on the daily charts we reach a substantial bottom right here in which case you can buy with hands down eyes closed whatever amount of money that you put in and you're going to get a rally now will that happen at the 200 day moving average possibly will it happen at the 2550 level Possibly. 
But at this point, we are shooting down really fast on the daily charts. That's for swing traders who are not looking at the screens every 15 minutes. So let's take a look at the same chart. I got to curtail. It's 9.33. I'm almost an hour, right? Okay. Um, let's take a look at the... Let's take a look at the one hour charts. You see what's going on. We are deeply oversold. We have a double bottom in place. Guys, this is not hard. Okay, please. What's hard is acting on these things. This is a double bottom in place. And if the double bottom plays out, we're going to get overbought again. And that means we are going to test roughly about uh we're going to test the uptrend uh the, the 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 bottom of the uptrend line somewhere around 2673 2380 so how much is that do you want to know how much dollars you're going to make if you do something right or act on it from 2634 where we are right now if we hit the, this level first level is 2660 that's about 30 points 30 times 7 that's 210 dow points just between here and here and that can happen within 25 minutes. If we entered the uh, consolidation channel that we were in before, actually the consolidation channel needs to be adjusted. I just can't tell you it's a consolidation channel without giving an accurate. Right there is more. One second, please. Thank you for your patience. That's that gap fill on the daily. So let's do this. One, two, that's a better view. Exact mathematical parallel symmetry. Okay, so if we get back in the consolidation channel over 2640, there's a high probability we're going to come back and retest the bottom end of the 34 day moving 34 SMA. It's a one hour chart, it's not a day, it's a 34 hour SMA at around 2674. Ladies and gentlemen, that's 40 points from here to here. Do you know what 40 points can do to your PL during the day or during two days? Just do your math, okay. 40 points can almost triple your money on that trade. So the move from here to here on SPY or SPX calls could pass, it would most probably be to two to 300%, write it down, two to 300% on that particular trade within 24 to 48 hours, if it happens, okay? Because one way or the other, we're going to test the bottom end of this downward sloping at this point, 34 and 50 day moving average. So if you want to sit there, twiddle your thumbs and do like heavy analysis paralysis and watch Oprah and uh, whatever, whatever you do, okay? Um, and sit there and ask your head like 900 different questions and see the profits just swing by, that's your prerogative, not mine. Because I'm in the business of making money. I'm in the business of making a living, business of paying back debts, business of paying taxes to Uncle Sam, and business of taking care of my family and giving a big chunk to my favorite charities and to our armed forces. That's it. So whatever business you're in, you do what you need to do. I'm showing you what is going to happen. Now, the downside is that you will come back and retest these levels but on a short-term basis there will be a bounce okay the bounce might not start at 9 30 tomorrow morning but there will be a bounce now if there is no bounce and we slip lower which is a high probability uh, which is also a high probability then we react accordingly the failure to get back into this channel will create a pullback and i'm always there to at least message this information to you guys on a real-time basis so you can act accordingly. You do not, I repeat, have to put any large sums of money. You can play small, which gets big because the volatility, the V word, is big. This is not a market that's moving 20, 30 points up and down. 
This is the market that moves 100, 200, 400, 600. That's how it works. On that note, guys, I have nothing more to say. I wish you all well. Welcome to the new normal. I've said this for years, and now it's really coming into effect. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Is it doable? Absolutely yes. The biggest missing, missing ingredient in this whole picture is yourself. Have a great evening, gentlemen, ladies.